we're pretty impressed at this point with Amazon Web Services. And what if it were free? Well, actually, that's, that is how some of it works. We know we can sign up for a free tier, and we can use that free tier for a certain time period. And then, believe it or not, some of the services will remain free potentially forever. So that's pretty cool. But let's face it, when we really start doing a lot of compute and networking and bringing in all kinds of services, eventually we're going to be charged. In this nugget, let's talk about how some of these pricings work inside of Amazon Web Services. So when we start using more robust services, more robust resources, we are going to be charged. And you can basically break it down like this. Of course, we need to be charged for compute. So when we go into EC2, as an example, and we start spinning up very large instance types, maybe we have something that uses like 34 gigs of RAM, and it's got eight virtual CPUs. When we spin up a beefy server like this, we're going to be charged per hour or per minute for usage of that resource. Think about storage. Sure, there's some S3 storage that will be free, but once we go over a certain amount of storage, we start getting charged. Something else that we're going to get charged for is data transfer, but in general, please keep this in mind, it is outbound data transfer, if I can spell that. Woo, I got it. So data transfers out are what Amazon Web Services will start tracking and charging us for. This makes sense, right? This refers to that stuff that our clients are accessing from Amazon Web Services. So when it comes to there not being a charge, that would be us like moving data into the cloud or maybe us connecting to configure the cloud. These data transfers are not going to incur charges. And there's another interesting one that we don't get charged for, thank goodness, and that's, let's just say, transfer between. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, like, here's our S3 service in the cloud, and this is our EC2 service in the cloud. When these two services are communicating with each other based on maybe some application that we're doing, in fact, maybe this is a web server and the S3 storage service has the web pages that we're serving up. This transfer right here, we wouldn't be charged for. And that's a really good thing, of course, because we wouldn't want to start getting outrageous charges just because we're building our cloud the way Amazon Web Services suggested we build it. And that's separate and keep things modular and also use different availability zones so that we have good high availability and high reliability. Liability. Now, I've mentioned this before, the overall pricing scheme of Amazon Web Services, Amazon tells us is a pay-as-you-go model. And that's really true, isn't it? If you go in and you spin up a bunch of resources that they're going to charge us for, at the end of the month, you get your bill. So we are paying monthly as we go with our Amazon Web Service infrastructure. Contrast this to what you would do if you built your own data center. If you built your own data center, that's a data center. Oh boy, I need to go back to Amber Barker's drawing classes. She's our illustrator here. Anyways, if you build your own data center, what do you have to do? You do all those associated costs up front. You're not paying as you go. You're typically paying a whole bunch up front, and oftentimes we have to guess at the capacity we need. Yuck. Notice something else about Amazon Web Service pricing, though. We get to pay less when we reserve. If you know that you're going to need four different big servers and that you're going to have these on all the time, you can do what's called reserved instance pricing and you will save a ton of money. There's even three pay models there. You can pay all up front and you'll save the most money. You can do some up front and you'll save uh, not as much money as you would if you did all up front. And then finally, you could do no up front and you'd save less. But all of these models are going to save over what the classic 
pricing scheme is, and that's called on demand. If you spin up these four servers you know you need just willy-nilly, then that's going to be on demand pricing and you're going to pay whatever the cost is at that time and that will guaranteed to be more than if you reserved instances. Also with a lot of the services, the more you start using, the less the price is per unit. Now think about that. Makes sense, right? I mean, obviously your your spending is going up overall because you're using a lot more, but at least the per unit price is coming down for you as you become bigger in Amazon Web Services. And then finally, Amazon also does something cool. As they grow and as they make more money, they will pass those savings on to us. So we have seen over the years the average cost of resources in the on-demand model just continuing to go down because Amazon Web Services just continues to be much more successful. So we really need to study up on the costs associated with Amazon Web Services. And of course, I've got some more nuggets for you on that that are going to help you because while we can save a ton of money over traditional IT infrastructures, it does require us to do our homework and understand the various pricing models we've discussed when it comes to AWS. I hope you found this nugget informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing.